Hi, I'm John Bader, author of Dean's List. Today I'd like to talk to you about five ideas for studying successfully in college. Number one, set a good pattern from day one. When you're coming in as a new freshman to college, it's very exciting and very easy to be distracted. You don't have your parents around to push you and to tell you it's time to study. You don't have teachers making sure that you get things handed in on time. And so with all of that freedom, it's easy to set up some rather unhealthy and unproductive habits. You might, for example, postpone doing most of your studying until you get closer to midterms. You might decide that it's okay to wait on writing a paper or even choosing its topic until later. You might think, well, I can read this a little bit later. You can see that procrastination is a big problem for a freshman. Other problems that freshmen can have are taking notes in a way that don't make a lot of sense. The main thing is to think about what you're doing and realize that those habits will stick with you for a long time. Number two, figure out how to take full advantage of lectures. The important thing is to think of a lecture not as just something to write down and to remember, but one side of an important conversation that you're having with a faculty member about what is interesting and important about the subject. What are the key concepts that you should understand? You should be filled with questions, some of which will be answered by the lecture, some of which won't. And that's where you'll need to use office hours and, of course, all the work you'll do outside of the lecture, both in preparing for it and in making sense of it when it's over. Number three, be self-conscious and strategic about what you are learning. You have to approach the material strategically. What I mean by that is to think about what is important. How do these issues relate to one another? What are the main concepts that I need to understand and how can they be applied in other circumstances? So understanding something is much more important than memorizing it and that's why you need to be strategic. Number four, if you're an athlete, learn how to shift your clock. What I mean by that is that most college students stay up very late doing a lot of work late into the night. Now even if you're not an athlete, that's not a very good idea. Uh, a, 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 an adolescent like you needs sleep, and even if you're older than that, you still need sleep. And when you try to get work done late at night, it can be a problem for understanding and remembering what you're studying. For athletes, this is a special challenge because they, of course, work so hard and they push their bodies so hard that those bodies need to recover. And that's hard to do late at night and study at the same time. It generally does not work. So some of the best student athletes that I know have shifted their clock. They get up earlier than their friends, which can be difficult and un unusual, but very effective by filling in every minute of the day as best they can with their studies. All of this, again, as best they can before they go to practice. And that way, after practice, their bodies are recovering, but their minds have already taken care of the studies they need to do that day. And number five, go to class. This might seem strange to you because you've been going to class in high school every day. People take role, make sure that you're there and you can get in a lot of trouble if you're not. In college, no one takes the role, except in the rare instances of, say, a language class or an introductory writing class. But for the most part, nobody's paying attention to whether or not you show up. A lot of students abuse this freedom and privilege by not showing up from time to time. Sometimes that can be chronic. Think about this for a minute, though. First of all, you and your parents and friends are paying a lot of money to get this education. So not showing up to class is ripping yourself off. The second point is that lectures and discussions, of course, have a critical role to helping you understand the material that you're trying to, to work on. If you don't go to class, you won't get the sense of what is important and how all of these concepts fit together. Well, thank you very much for listening today about five ideas for studying more successfully. If you'd like to learn more about these ideas and the 11 habits of highly successful college students, do check out the book Dean's List.
and thanks again for listening.